This video is a complete beginner's guide to CNC's. What they are, how they work, and exactly what it takes to go from idea to finished product. So whether you're just curious or ready to dive in, by the end of this video, you'll understand how CNC's work and you'll feel confident enough to dive in and get started. I've used everything from small hobby CNC's all the way up to industrial ones that cut out hundreds of parts a day. I'll be explaining everything in plain English, no jargon, no fluff. So first off, what the heck's a CNC? So CNC stands for Computer Numerically Controlled. And pretty much what that means, you have a computer that you program and it's gonna move different motors and parts. There are a ton of different types of CNC's. There are CNC lasers, 3D printers are also CNC's. You have those cool robot arms in factories. Those are all different types of CNC's. But in today's specific video, we'll be covering three axis CNC routers. And what makes CNC routers different is the motor and the thing that is actually cutting is a router or a spindle. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but that's the most important thing to understand. Anybody can learn a CNC and run it and purely enjoy it. So whether you use it as therapy or a way to scratch an itch, a CNC is going to be perfect for almost anybody. So in order to make a finished product, you have to understand all three levels of CNC machining. The first level is CAD, which stands for Computer Aided Design, the CAM, which stands for Computer Aided Machining, and the CNC and workflow itself. So we'll be covering the basics of all three of those components. So CAD is the part where you take the idea that's in your head and stick it on a computer screen. Now there's gonna be different programs and softwares to run, so the more complicated ones allow you to 3D model, and that's going to be Fusion 360, SketchUp, along with a multitude of other programs. Now the easier ones, and I would say the more cost-effective ones, are going to be 2D and 2.5D drawing softwares, and my favorite are VCarve Pro by Vetric, and Carbite Create by Carbite 3D. Those are my top two. So whenever you're drawing on a CAD software, this is the most important thing to understand, that you have to understand that this CNC is working off of a graph. So just like a graph you drew in school, you have the X axis and the Y axis. So Y axis right here, and this is the X axis of a CNC. And whenever you draw on one of these softwares, all you're doing are putting dots and you connect those dots just like this. And so those dots right there, those are gonna be called nodes. And that line right there is going to be called a vector, simple enough. And if you draw enough of those dots like that and connect enough of them, you get what you called a closed vector. That's really it. And so all those softwares are allowing you to do is connect dots with lines, which are called vectors. Now, seriously, it's not any more complicated than that. The hard part on any CAD software is knowing which button to click to make which shape you want. So once you have that idea that's in your head put onto paper, my idea was a simple square, then we move over to the cam portion of it, and that's going to be where we figure out how to actually machine this out. And that's going to involve a few different things. That's going to be your tools, your tool paths, and your feeds and speeds. So when you get into tools, it really depends on what you're cutting out. And there are a ton of different tools out there. Most commonly, you're gonna see spiral end mills for woodworking. They're simple bits. They're, they're just like any other router bit, except they usually do not have a bearing on them because bearings do not work on CNC's. And there's just a variety, whether it's a V-bit or a tapered ball nose, a ball nose. There's just a ton of different tools out there. So once you figure out which tool to use, we then have to figure out what tool path we're going to use. Now, each software that I mentioned earlier is going to have roughly the same names for these softwares. And so let's just say we have this square drawn and we wanna cut it out on the middle of this square. So we have the nodes that we drew on the software and we wanna cut out that exact same square right in the middle of this square. Well, there are also a ton of different tool paths, but the three most common tool paths are going to be profiling, pocketing, and drilling. 
and drilling is the simplest. That is simply taking a bit and just poking a hole. The next one is going to be pocketing. And what pocketing is, is if you want to remove any material inside of a closed vector, and once again, what's a closed vector? is something where all these dots are simply connected. And so a pocketing toolpath would actually come in here and eat away all this material inside this square like that. And then the last most popular toolpath you will ever use is a profile toolpath. Some other programs call it a contour toolpath. And all that is, it's just gonna take a node, whether it's opened or closed, and it's going to either cut on the outside of it or the inside of it or right on top. So if I just wanted to cut out a simple zigzag, I can take a profile toolpath, run it right on top, and it'll cut that out. So toolpaths aren't really all that scary, but where it does get hard is on the feeds and the speeds. So why feeds and speeds is so hard it's because there's not a one size fits all. Depending on the CNC that you have, depending on the material you're cutting, what bit you're using, there's a multitude of different answers. And realistically, there is no perfect answer for feeds and speeds. But what they are is you have your feed rate and then you have your RPMs. And so RPMs is how fast this bit is spinning, eating material. And then you have how fast it's moving through the material and you can also have how deep it's cutting the material. So there's all these crazy things that go along with it, and that's the one that really takes the longest in a CNC journey to master, or at least get about 85% good at. And that's not something to be scared of. Just know that 85% of people don't understand feeds and speeds, and they own CNCs, and they're cutting out products. But more or less, you just have to know how fast to spin it, start at 18,000 RPMs, how fast to run it, run it slow, and how deep to cut, cut shallow, at least when you're first starting off. Now, I think feeds and speeds is one of the hardest things to master, but honestly, owning a CNC is also pretty hard. So comment down below the word hybrid woodworker if you are already a proud owner of a CNC, and if you want to, the make and the model. The last part of the CAM software is taking whatever toolpath that you created and transforming it into a language that the CNC can read. It does this in two steps. The first step is that that design software converts everything into G-code. And G-code simply stands for geometric code. And guess what? A square is a little bit of geometry, right? And these nodes are different points on a graph just like this. So a geometric code is literally just connecting the dots, hence G-code. Very simple, don't overcomplicate it. Now, the next thing it'll do is it'll take that G code and put it into a language that your specific machine can read. So the most common post-processor reader is going to be Gerbil. That's going to be G-R-B-L. And that one's the most common because it's open source. But a lot of these CNC companies will read only certain languages and some have their own proprietary languages. Usually, you don't need to stress about that. Let the engineers do all the stressing. You just want to typically make stuff on your CNC. So now that we have the CAD done right, we drew the squares, we told the machine how to cut out the squares, we selected the bit, we told it how fast to go, now we have to operate on the machine. And so we take our little flash drive of G code that we got and we converted it to the right language to the CNC and now we plug it in. And now we get to the CNC part of it, the fun part. Now, as we get into the CNC router component of this video, I do wanna mention CIC Workshop. It's a company that I created that supplies you with bits and materials. Materials, whether it's walnut panels or ingrain cutting board kits or plastic. And we have a fantastic beginner bit set that has the five bits that every beginner needs. And I'd love for you to check that out. And don't forget to give us a like and subscribe. So whenever you're looking at CNC routers, there are typically four components that I typically look at and that's going to be power, rigidity, size, and support. Now, I'm not gonna go fully in depth into those, but just know that size is roughly how big the machine is. Rigidity is how stiff it is and really how much it can handle, right? Like how fast you can run it. That's gonna rely on the rigidity. The power part is going to be that spindle over there. And so a lot of people make the mistake of getting a small, small spindle, but try to run it really fast. And that just doesn't work. And the last thing is going to be the support part. 
Now, support matters because you're gonna be learning this and you're going to need help along the way. So whether it's a Facebook page, a great customer service, whether it's a library full of videos, I do think Carbite Create and the Shea Poco have a great, I think the best support network of any CNCs. And I always recommend the Shea Poco for the absolute beginner if you can afford it, because it is a decently expensive hobby CNC, not gonna lie, but it does get you off the ground and cutting faster than any other hobby CNC would. So those three steps allow you to take that idea that's in your head and put it into the machine and allow you to start cutting on a CNC. I think buying a CNC is one of the best things I've ever done and I truly enjoy doing it and truly enjoy teaching it. So thank y'all guys so much for watching. And as always guys, remember, if you ain't cutting it close, you ain't cutting it right.